you are welcome to another episode of this relationship fishing you're welcome this is the voice of prince victor matthew and i provide solutions to relationship and capacity problems in this episode i will be talking about or should i say i will be redefining true success in relationship Yes, I'll be defining true success in relationship. What is the evidence of a successful relationship? What is the evidence of a successful dating and courtship experience? Before I go into this redefinition of success, I would like to state some things you think is the definition of success in relationship that is not. First of all, the success of a relationship, dating or courtship, doesn't mean that the relationship leads to marriage. Marriage is not the evidence of a successful relationship. Bearing children is not the evidence of a successful relationship. Being able to train up your children is not the evidence of a successful relationship or marriage. In fact, Staying in the relationship for months and years without conflict is not a sign of a successful relationship. Then, what is really the success definition of a relationship? First of all, I need you to understand that success can be defined as a reality that aligns with the original intention of a creator over a creation, which means it's not in the power of anybody to determine what the success of your relationship should be. Your life assignment is the definition of a successful relationship in your life which means what i called success in my relationship will not be what you will call success in your relationship this is the power of individual differences i am saying this not to create a formula but i am saying this to create a principle by which individual can navigate their selves into the definition of what God has ordained success to mean to them in their own relationship. A successful relationship is built on Amos chapter 3 verse 3. The Bible says that can two work together except they agree. So the success of a relationship is known, seen and experienced by the power of agreement. Until there is an alignment, there's an alignment between your dream and this person's dream. Until there is an agreement, do you people agree in the place of your values and your beliefs? Do you and your lover agree in the place of priority? Do you and your lover agree in the place of needs? Do you and your lover agree in the place of direction in life? Do do you and your lover agree in the place of life assignment? Are you agreeing in the place of your purpose, your calling, your vision, your assignment to this generation? Are you in agreement? The quality and the strength of your agreement is the evidence of success in relationship. It's possible to be romantic to someone that you are not in agreement with. So I'm not talking about emotions, sex and kissings. That can happen between two people who are not in agreement. very important who are you have you found yourself in Christ have you discovered your purpose have you discovered your direction in life have you discovered what you were born to become and do 
because success in relationship is when this person you are in relationship with and their relationship with you is supporting you, is helping you, is inspiring you, is contributing energies within you to learn more about yourself, to discover more about yourself, to practice more about your life assignment, to grow, to rise from the place of weakness to the place of strength, to love God, to know God, to walk in the principles and in the concepts of God's plan for your life. That's the success of relationship. The success of relationship is defined when you meet someone who agrees with you in faith, in hope, in belief, in dreams, in directions in life, in values in life, in needs in life. Either complementary or compatible, either in complementary terms or in compatibility terms, success in relationship is defined by agreement becoming one becoming one that is why i keep telling people don't beg a lady to accept you don't impose yourself on a man as a lady don't don't do that don't impose yourself on a man as a lady don't impose yourself on a lady as a man don't do that if this individual do not like you and are not he or she is not excited to agree with you for relationship then don't force it you don't manage to date you don't manage to marry don't let anybody pity you don't be the second choice of anybody you're original and you're special there can never be, <laughs> there can never be success in a relationship until the two individual lovers have a successful life before you seek for success in relationship. The question is, have you cultivated success for yourself? What is the quality of success you have been able to generate by yourself for yourself? In the place of your dreams, in the place of your life assignment, in the place of your spiritual growth, in the place of attitude, in the place of mindset, in the place of planning, in your long-term goals and your short-term goals. How have you been able to generate success by yourself? Because that is the major by which we used to rate if you have the capacity to agree with someone and generate success with the person. So successful relationship is not when a man is a spectator and the woman is doing all the job in the relationship. It is not when a lady is a spectator and a man is doing all the work in the relationship. No, success in relationship is where the man and the woman are participating together in the relationship according to their individual dreams that aligns together, that agrees together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That is it. Success in relationship can be discovered by how successful you are in fulfilling life assignment in the midst of your relationship with this person. It is discovered by how much you are successful in growing in your faith and in your work with God in the midst of your relationship with this person. It is discovered by the kind of growth you are attaining. Are you growing out of your life assignment or you are growing into your life assignment or you are growing through your life assignment? The answers to these questions will help us to know if you have a successful relationship. The fact that he pays all your bills, he buys the most expensive material things for you, does not mean it's a successful relationship. Successful relationship is being measured by the quality of how you are growing in the knowledge of God's plan for your life and in the knowledge of each other. 
the Bible says that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. It's okay you know much about your dreams. It's okay you know much about your life assignment. But how much do you know about the person you are in a relationship with? Oh, you used to know him to be this and that. You used to know her to be this and that. Who has this person become today? How have you paid attention to evaluate the present realities in this person's life? Do you know their strength? Do you know their weakness? Do you know how you can complement their effort? Do you know how to enjoy the grace that is in their life? Do you know when to release the grace that is in your life for them? The definition of a successful relationship is known by the constant growth of your knowledge about who God is, number one. Number two, the growth of the knowledge of yourself in Christ. Number three, the growth of your of the knowledge of the person you are in a relationship with. Number four. Number five, the growth of the knowledge and the practicing of your life assignments. Number six, the growth of how both of you are complementing and participating in each other's dream, raising the banner of God's kingdom in any field of life that God has positioned you people. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah! This is successful relationship. This is the definition of a successful relationship. There are no two ways about it. Please, I need you to listen to this episode again and again because I have said a lot of things, I've conjured a lot of things together that you need to pay attention to these things. They might be simple, but within them are the, are the life of God that will reposition you. The fact that you propose to you doesn't mean that your relationship is successful. The definitions of men are not the definitions of God. The definitions of human and social medias about a successful relationship is different from the kingdom definition of a successful relationship. So please, I need you to pay attention to yourself, pay attention to who you are in a relationship with, pay attention to the relationship you are in and sincerely ask yourself, am I wasting my time? Are we wasting our time? Or we are actually growing? Are we busy but guilty? Are we busy but lazy? Are we busy but distracted? Are we busy but deceived? It's a call for self-evaluation. It's a call for self-evaluation. I'm not saying that your relationship can be refixed. But if you discover that you have failed and you are failing, go back to the drawing board. Go back to the drawing board. This leave, leave, your, leave your lover alone. Personally, go back to God. Individually, the lovers should go back to their personal relationship with God and get it right with God. Get it right with the knowledge of who God is to them, with the knowledge of who they are in Christ, with the knowledge of what God expects of them in relationship. Then both lovers can come together. To decide if the relationship worth continuing or it has come to a place to end. I'm talking about a relationship before marriage. I'm not talking about after marriage. This is the voice of Prince Victor Matthew. I provide solutions to relationship and capacity problems. Thank you for giving me your attention. I honor you.